And good morning once again, grace to you and peace. Welcome to this service of worship on this, the Lord's Day, and the fifth Sunday after Epiphany. We do welcome all of you who are worshiping this morning via Zoom or Facebook Live. We're trying to get YouTube Live up. It's not cooperating this morning, but we'll keep trying on that. But we're grateful for those who are here with us this morning via Zoom or Facebook Live. There is a, a link to the bulletin in the chat if you'd like to um, download that and follow along with our service this morning. We do continue with our virtual winter Bible study each Monday evening. That is going wonderfully. Uh, we're kind of halfway through that uh, as of this week. And so we'll look forward to the last few sessions of that with Don Griggs. Reminder to the session that the session will meet this Tuesday for our regular monthly stated meeting, Tuesday the 9th at seven o'clock. We will be in person here at the church or via Zoom. You should have gotten a link to the Zoom. If you don't, aren't comfortable getting out, we'll still do that, offer that, but we will be in person as well here at the church. Salem Presbytery also meets on Tuesday uh, virtually via Zoom. I will be attending and our commissioner this time will be Ben Russell elder, as our elder commissioner. Excited to, to uh, kind of finish up our, our Hamilton series the, uh, this week and next week will be the last two uh, of that series. I appreciate the, the wonderful response and good comments for those of you who are enjoying it. It's, I, I've certainly enjoyed it myself. Had a wonderful, I mentioned last Sunday, attending a virtual conference this week, the, what I usually go to this time of year at APSI, Association of Presbyterian Church Educators. Had our uh, conference virtually the last few days, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Over a thousand people gathered virtually. And it was, it was a wonderful conference. Uh, learned a lot. Uh, it was a lot of good worship and speakers and workshops and Nancy Purcell also participated thanks to a scholarship from our presbytery and so we are grateful that she got to to be involved with that as well. It's hard to believe that a week from this Wednesday is Ash Wednesday and since we are not meeting in person we will do something a little different at five o'clock on Ash Wednesday We'll invite you to come to the church for a drive-through imposition of ashes. We'll have individual little cups of ashes that we will do the imposition of ashes, and then we'll have our normal service, uh, online service at seven o'clock. So five o'clock, come get your ashes, and then seven o'clock, we'll have our service. Is there no other announcements? We will proceed with our call to worship. We gather to worship God, whose creative imagination never fails for the sake of God. Let me get the screen up. For the sake of God, we will search for the outcast. We gather to praise our God, whose steadfast love never weakens. For the sake of Jesus, we will lift up all who have fallen. We gather to offer our best to God, who walks with us through eternity. For the sake of the Holy Spirit, we will walk with the weary. Our opening hymn is Jesus, the very thought of thee.
Let us pray. O oh God, open our hearts by the power of your Holy Spirit, so that the words of Scripture that we hear this day may become your word that empowers our lives in this time and place. Amen. Our scripture this morning comes from the Gospel of Luke. We're looking at the fourth chapter, verses 31 through 44. Jesus went down to the city of Capernaum in Galilee and taught the people each Sabbath. They were amazed by his teaching because he delivered his message with authority. A man in the synagogue had the spirit of an unclean demon. He screamed, hey, what have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are. You are the Holy One from God. Silence, Jesus said, speaking harshly to the demon, come out of him. The demon threw the man down before them, then came out of him without harming him. They were all shaken and said to each other, what kind of word is this, that he can command unclean spirits with authority and power and they leave. Reports about him spread everywhere in the surrounding region. After leaving the synagogue, Jesus went home with Simon. Simon's mother-in-law was sick with a high fever and the family asked Jesus to help her. He bent over her and spoke harshly to the fever and it left her. She got up at once and served them. When the sun was setting, everyone brought to Jesus relatives and acquaintances with all kinds of diseases Placing his hands on each of them, he healed them. Demons came out of many people. They screamed, you are God's son. But he spoke harshly to them and wouldn't allow them to speak because they recognized he was the Christ. When daybreak arrived, Jesus went to a deserted place. The crowds were looking for him. When they found him, they tried to keep him from leaving them. But he said to them, I must preach the good news of God's kingdom in other cities too. For this is why I was sent. So he continued preaching in the Judean synagogues. This is Holy Scripture for God's people. Thanks be to God. Join me, if you would, in our res responsive offering of prayers. You lift up those we step over in our race to success. You soak our aching feet in the waters of life. You massage hearts bruised by others. We praise you rebuilder of crumbling souls. You pick those not chosen on the playgrounds of life. You cover open sores with your grace. You wander our streets, inviting those who huddle in doorways to feast at your table. We follow you, bread of heaven. You gather those who are cast aside by a throwaway society and call them by name. You melt hearts hardened by cynicism with the warmth of your hope. You energize us so we can sprint into the kingdom. We welcome you, delightful spirit. God and community, holy and one, we come to you as your people. We walk through life confident, strong, boasting of all our achievements. But God sees the hurts we have inflicted on others, the weariness in our bones from chasing after bad choices and all the foolishness we trip over in the busyness of life. Let us come to God for the one who listens to our faltering words is the one who gives us the word filled with grace and mercy. We cannot hide from you, even if we were to go from one edge of creation to the next. You speak to us of compassion, but the ways in which we treat others show we have not been listening. You explain your hopes to us, and we act as if we don't have a clue as to what is going on. We run as fast and as far from you as we can and wonder why we have no energy to follow Jesus. Yet you search for us in all the deserted places we flee to so you can take us by the hand to show us the way to life with you. You heal our broken hearts so we can offer them to others. You fill us with your strength so we can bind ourselves to Jesus, our Savior, following him to serve all your, of your children. People of God, remember your baptism and be grateful.
Have you not been listening? God never tires out, nor is there an explanation, expiration date on God's forgiveness. God is ever with us, healing us with mercy and strengthening us for service. If God numbers the stars, surely our names are known by the one who loves us and offers us grace. This is indeed good news for all. Thanks be to God. Amen. As people of God gathered in these places, who are we? We are a community of believers called by God to worship, serve, teach, and support. With the whole church, let us say what we believe. In life and in death, we belong to God. Through the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit, we trust in the one triune God, the Holy One of Israel, whom alone we worship and serve. With believers in every time and place, we rejoice that nothing in life or in death can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Amen. grateful for all the gifts that continue to come in to for the ministry and mission of Bethany so that can continue we appreciate those who drop by your gifts or send put them in the mail or use our online giving platform we are grateful as the needs of our church continue let us pray oh God we give you thanks for the gifts of creation and for the gift of life itself we dedicate our resources to you, trusting and hoping that they will build up your work in our world. Amen.
We pause now to offer prayers for those of our community of faith who are in need of prayer. We certainly keep Chris in your prayers as he continues to deal with his issues. We pray for all who are suffering from the effects of uh, the coronavirus, those who mourn the loss of loved ones and friends from this um, disease. Let us come to God in prayer. God of creation and redemption, your prophet Isaiah reminds us that you have established the heavenly host and invite us to lift up your eyes on high and see who created these. We thank you for this assurance of your strength and power. You have created all things and continue to sustain them. You also come into our present moment, our times of vulnerability and trial to renew our strength. And for thus we are thankful. Yet we acknowledge, O oh God, that the realities of the pandemic weigh heavily upon us, upon our children, upon our nation and the entire globe. Our crisis feels like an exile because we are living with profound isolation and deep vulnerability. Teach us, O oh God, that standalone self-sufficiency is an illusion and is not your will for us. Help us to discern our deep interdependency with one another and with you. Help us to trust in the comforting words of the prophet Isaiah that remind us that you give power to the faint and strengthen the powerless, and that those who wait on you shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. These words affirm that you, O oh God, can make a way when there appears to be no way. Thus, we continue to pray for weary healthcare workers in the trenches of this pandemic and for all who are now facilitating vaccinations. We pray for your comfort, for all who are sick and for all who have lost loved ones. Empower us to be agents of love and justice for all who are suffering in our midst. We offer these prayers in the name of Jesus Christ, who has taught us when we pray to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I know this may be hard to believe, but there was a time in my life back in the day, way back in the day, when I was really into backpacking. Now, I wasn't into it like my friend Robin, Robin, who you, some of you know, who has joined us on Zoom occasionally, but I enjoyed it when I had the opportunity. Robin and his brother Paul were really into backpacking as they spent six months or so in 1979 hiking the entire Appalachian Trail. More power to them. No, I didn't take on that challenge, but working at Camp Greer all those summers during college did instill in me a love of the outdoors and exploring our beautiful Blue Ridge Mountains. There were several trails that we would venture out on in that area, but I really enjoyed the few times that I was able to, to hike sections of the Appalachian Trail. Robin introduced me to the beauty and the challenge of the trail, and I was able to share that with my youth groups over the years. One section of the trail that I hiked several times was perfect for inexperienced and young hikers. It was up in Virginia around the Mount Rogers area, including the Grayson Highlands State Park that you see on the sign. The hardest part of the hike was right at the beginning. The first mile and a half or so was climbing from where we parked the cars up Pine Mountain, a climb of about 1,500 feet in elevation. Once you got up to Pine Mountain, you basically hiked the rest of the, the trip on or near the ridge with fabulous views of the Blue Ridge Mountains in every direction. But that initial climb up Pine Mountain was tough for an out of shape 30 something year old carrying a 40 pound backpack. I remember one particular trip where one of the kids on the trip did triathlons. After several minutes of steep climbing, I stopped to rest and catch my breath. I could, I could practically feel my heart beating through every vessel and artery. 
it had to be in the 120 to 130 beats per minute range. I was put to shame by this kid whose heart rate was all the way up to about 79, but he was patient with me. Let me get my rest before we continued on up the mountain. The key is knowing when to take a break and for how long. Being able to stop and take your backpack off and get some water is essential in making sure you have the stamina to complete your hike. But if your break is too long, it's really hard to get back up and get back on the trail. Some people even do short bursts of high energy and then short breaks. My thought was always, if we're gonna take a break, then let's take a break. In any aspect of life, it's important to know when to slow down, when to take a break, when to take time to renew and refresh and catch your breath. Whether it's out hiking the Appalachian Trail or working in an office or doing housework or working in the yard, knowing when to take a break for your own health and safety is important. For some people, however, staying busy can be what energizes them. Now, I'm, I'm not one of those people. I've known people like that, so-called workaholics who thrive when, when busy and are somewhat lost when there's a lull. Some of you may be familiar with the Myers-Briggs personality inventory test. This, this widely used test measures aspects of our personality as to how we relate to the world around us and how we respond to certain situations. There are four sections in the tests, measuring one side of the scale to another. One is thinking and feeling, uh, judging or perceiving, sensing or intuitive, and extrovert or introvert. I know this will come as a complete huge shock to you, but I scored off the chart on the introvert scale. What this means is that I get my energy and renewal from time to myself away from other people. Extroverts are just the opposite. They get their energy from interacting with other people, from, from being around people. What we have to realize is, is that there is nothing wrong with either end of that scale because everybody is different and, and everybody, everybody reacts differently to the world around us. Introverts are fed by quiet time and alone time. Extroverts are fed by being around other people. As I've gotten older, I, I've tried to be more aware of my introverted nature. I hope I've been better at being more extroverted, but I do still like my alone time when I take a break. I think we can see from our scripture reading this morning that Jesus liked his alone time as well. This passage is only one example from the many times we see throughout the gospels where Jesus would try to get away from the crowds and, and have some time to himself for prayer. Jesus gained his strength and was renewed when he was able to get away, which wasn't too often. His ministry of healing was such that the crowds followed him wherever he went it was hard to escape them. He, di he didn't turn anyone away. We have to remember that Jesus was a human being who experienced every bit of life that a human being would experience. He got tired. He got worn out. I'm sure there were times when he just wished that the crowds would go away so he could get some rest and renewal and take a break. He tried to do that many times and was successful to a point. He did manage to get away for prayer and renewal from time to time, which gave him the energy to continue answering to the constant demands of the people. I think maybe we need to look to his example and find time to take a break because there's a danger if we don't find that time that we can make some bad decisions. In our song from Hamilton, that is our focus for this morning, Eliza and her sister Angelica keep begging for Alexander to take a break, to get away with them and to go upstate for some downtime. And just to note, we're not going to actually listen to the song this morning. It's really long. 
there's some other aspects that don't fit into our theme, but so, but I think we can get the gist of what I'm going to share about it. They beg for him to come and spend some time with his family. We know from past discussions that Alexander was somewhat of a workaholic. His brain never switched off. He had so much that he wanted to accomplish and he felt like that there just wasn't enough time to, to get everything done that he wanted to get done. He keeps talking in this song about he needing to get his plan through Congress. That was his big push. Eliza knew that he was wearing himself out and that he needed to get away to take a break, but he wasn't able to bring himself to do that. And so Eliza and their son and Angelica went upstate without him. What this song leads to is to is what happens next. What happens while Eliza is away? Not taking time for ourselves, not taking a break can lead to bad decisions. It was during this time when Eliza was away that Alexander had an affair with another woman, the affair that almost cost him his marriage. Has there been a time in your life when exhaustion or being overworked or being too stressed out with life has led to making a bad decision? I'm sure we've all been there. Bad decisions usually come when we aren't able to, to think clearly about the ramifications of, of the decision we're about to make. Bad decisions come when our minds are filled with so many thoughts and stuff that we aren't able to step back and analyze the situation fully. Good decisions usually come when we take a break when we were able to step away and analyze and think about all the aspects of the decision that needs to be made. There was one time that Jesus took time to, to get away and to pray. On the night before he was crucified, when he took a break and went to the Garden of Gethsemane to pray. Although he knew what was to come and he knew that he had to follow his father's will, he still had a decision to make. He could have walked away, could have walked away and saved himself, but his time of prayer led him to the decision to carry out his life's mission, a decision that ultimately has saved us all. The disciples, on the other hand, think about their response. In their exhaustion, they fell asleep and then made some bad decisions. They, they, they wanted to fight. Peter decided that his best move would be to deny that he ever even knew Jesus. Judas threw it all away and betrayed Jesus. The disciples had been with Jesus all this time and were just as tired and exhausted as he was. Jesus took a break and through prayer made the right decision. The disciples, not so much. Maybe if they had taken a break. Jesus has set such a wonderful example for us about the importance of being able to, to find time away from the stresses of life. Even if your work is your, is your life, it is important to be able to find time away. In the world in which we live today, it is harder and harder to find that time. When your office fits in the palm of your hand, it's hard to get away. When an email or a text can reach you just about any time of the day or night, it's really hard to, to take a break. Work life encroaches on personal life more and more as technology increases. We have to find the willpower to put our phones down, to close our laptops or power down our computers and take a break. If Alexander had been able to do that, to put his work to the side for just a short time, perhaps he would not have made the decision, bad decision he made to have the affair. Eliza begged him to take a break. He should have listened. Who are the Elizas in our lives that beg us to take a break? Maybe it's just an inner voice that speaks to us telling us to slow down, Stop for a while, ease up on that gas pedal, take a break. We are not indispensable. Things will get done. 
My friend Robin was not only a hiker and backpacker, but also a biker. And not only did he and his brother Paul hike the Appalachian Trail, but a few years after that, he and his brothers Paul and David rode their bikes across the country on the Transamerica Bicycle Trail. I still have the bike that I use when Robin and I spent some time riding on the Skyline Drive up in Virginia. As you may know, the Skyline Drive is basically the continuance of the Blue Ridge Parkway as it goes from North Carolina into Virginia. I may have shared this story with you before, but it is certainly pertinent to our discussion this morning. Robin and I had decided that our trip would begin on the northern end of the Skyline Drive at Waynesboro, Virginia. And so on a hot August day in 1987, we made our way north to begin our 105 mile ride south. Did I mention that it was hot? As we left Waynesboro, the thermometer read about 98 degrees. It was hot. First 15 miles of the trip were uphill. The first 15 miles were uphill. Did I mention it was hot? Not wanting to be heroes and not wanting to die, we were smart enough to take breaks along the way. Sitting beside the road, catching my breath and drinking copious amounts of water, I turned to Robin and asked, tell me again why we're doing this? Because it feels so good when you stop, was his response. Wise words from my friend Robin. Take a break, because it feels so good when you stop. Taking a break refreshes our bodies, renews our minds, and clears our head so that we can make good decisions. We hear so much these days about our healthcare workers being stretched to the limits as the pandemic continues to rage. Let us pray that they will be able to take the breaks that they need as they make life-changing and life-saving decisions every day. Take a break. It's okay. Life will go on. And remember, it feels so good when you stop. Thanks be to God. Our closing hymn is Great God of Every Blessing.
God sends us forth into the world so we will go to walk miles in the shoes of others. Jesus calls us to serve everyone we meet so we will become all things to all people. The Holy Spirit encourages us to let go of our gospel given rights so we may breathe new life into the faint. People of God, go now into the world and as you go, keep the faith, live in hope and love one another. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord be kind and gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. And all God's people said, amen. Amen.